Hello, I'm back. Uh, good to see you guys, although I, obviously I can't see you because this is uh, YouTube. I'm back, if I feel like it's been forever since I did a, a video, so I've been thinking about it for a while and I feel like I haven't done enough tech stuff um, for you guys on the channel, so I thought I'd sort of dive into it. And it's a really interesting time at the moment for cameras and for tech and uh, for, especially for the mirrorless system. So, I have notes which I can hide in my crotch. Cool, okay. So, if you guys follow the channel, you already know that I um, currently shoot on the Fuji system. I've got two X-T2s um, that I use for weddings, and up until recently, I was using in the studio as well. And uh, I've been loving them. I originally started my kind of road with uh, Fuji from the X100T. I loved it. Uh, I moved on to the X-T1, and I started shooting weddings with those two cameras. Then I moved on to the X-Pro2, and now the X-T2s. Which is here. I'm currently shooting on the A7 III, so I'll have to keep referring to that, because uh, I haven't actually got it here to show you. So, I've um, been shooting on the Fuji system for a while now, and loved it. And then the A7 III came along, and I bought it. From having a play with the X-H1, I knew that it wasn't quite what I wanted it to be. Um, I, it just didn't really fit my needs um, when kind of shooting hybrid and also potentially moving into uh, things like wedding videography. Um, so I bought the A7 III and started shooting it in the studio. I love it for the studio. And that's actually replaced my X-T2s in the studio. Check the notes. I feel like I'm sitting weird. The problem with photography and cameras in general is there's no such thing as the perfect camera for all things. And um, that sucks, obviously. So today, I wanna to talk with you guys about why I'm not switching completely to the Sony system from Fuji. So let's go. So let's go over some of the pros and cons from the Fuji system uh, and why I enjoy shooting with that. And then we'll compare those to the pros and cons from the Sony system. And please bear in mind that these are just my opinion. They're not necessarily based in fact. I am not that techie in general. Um, so yeah, if I've got something wrong or if you feel like you disagree with any of the things that I mentioned on here, um, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but please do leave me a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So the first big, pro for, this, uh, for the Fuji system is the size. The actual body isn't that much smaller than the Sony system, but because it's got that crop APS-C sensor, um, it can afford to have much smaller lenses. I believe that's why it can have much smaller lenses. So this is the 56 mil on here on the X-T1 body, uh, and that's the equivalent of uh, an, pretty much an 85 mil. So really, really cool lens, but on a Sony or a Canon or pretty much any other system, I, I feel like this would be a lot bigger um, than what it is on the Fuji system. This is a great lens, by the way. Half of the reason why size is important to me is because I really don't like using camera straps. Um, they just get in the way, they're annoying. Uh, I know a lot of photographers who use the kind of money maker, hold fast type systems with the kind of leather straps that go around there. They're cool, I actually tried it and it didn't work for me, I didn't like how it felt and I didn't like how the cameras kind of swung around and stuff. So, and then I moved on to the, I think they're called the Black Widow. Um, uh, the, the, I always forget. Uh, if you check out my What's in the Bag video, there'll be um, all of this kit that I usually take to a wedding and they're in there. I think they're called the Black Widow holsters. Fuck, what are they? I'm pretty sure it's the Black Widow. Oh, they do a spider monkey as well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Okay, so I use the uh, spider holster 
Black Widow, uh, which is this little thing. And this just attaches to your belt, just your normal belt. You actually have to buy a belt for the system. So I have two Fuji cameras on each hip and they're attached to these, like kind of like, like quick draw, kind of cowboy style. And that just kind of works for me. I don't really like having them around my neck. Uh, and also like from the waist up, I don't look like a photographer. So it's um, there's just a system that's worked for me. And that is the, probably the main reason why I stick with the Fuji system is just the fact that even with the smaller lenses, I can't make the Sony system work while using these. The second reason why I um, really enjoy the Fuji system and which is a big pro to me is the cost. Um, to be fair, the, X, the X-H1 was a little bit more expensive than I wanted it to be and that's why I haven't bought it. But the X-T2s and most importantly, the lenses are ridiculously cheap compared to Sony, compared to most full frame stuff, apart from like the Sigma uh, lenses and things like that. Um, but the actual native Fuji lenses are incredibly cheap. Uh, so this is the 56 mil, which is the 85 equivalent. This might be a bit unfair, but um, I've noted down that this brand new from Wex, the 56 mil 1.2 is 849 pounds, which is, you know, it's a lot of money. Um, the Sony 85mm 1.4 G Master, I know it's a G Master, is £1,649. That's pretty much double the price of this. So um, there are cheaper alternatives to the 85mm, you can get a 1.8 and stuff like that, but, um, but still, the lenses are much more expensive in general um, compared to Fuji, so that's a, a big plus for the Fuji system. They do have, in my opinion, better ergonomics. I do really enjoy the fact that pretty much all the lenses have got the aperture ring actually on here. Can I do that special autofocus thing again? Where's the light? Are we in? Is that in focus? If I hide my face, it might get it. So yeah, it's got that kind of aperture ring um, there. So it's just really intuitive. I love the fact that I can look at the top plate of the actual camera and know exactly what shutter speed I'm on, exactly what ISO I'm on, and potentially even what uh, aperture I'm on, depending on which lens I'm using. Um, so that's a big plus for me. Rather than having to kind of go into settings, having a look at the back screen, I can pretty much be shooting from the hip the whole day and kind of knowing exactly what my settings are without having to check them here or look at like a little LCD screen or something. So it's a big plus for me on the Fuji system. So another reason, whoa, I'm cutting myself out here. Another reason why I really like the ergonomics for the Fuji system is this little switch here that I use all day. And if I can kind of maybe get it in focus, just here, so this little switch here that says M, C, and S, uh, which are basically manual focus, continuous, and single shot. So I'm constantly flipping between manual, con um, continuous, and uh, single shot, depending on what I'm shooting through the day, and it just kind of fits with my run and gun way of shooting. Okay, color science. Everybody bums the Fuji color science. It is brilliant, like I love it. Um, I didn't really appreciate it until I started shooting on Sony and started doing video and started actually shooting in the, in the studio on the Sony camera uh, and realized that it was really difficult to get the images to where I wanted them to be in terms of color and tone and contrast because I was so used to it being really easy on the Fuji system. It just seems to suit my style and my approach to color and tone. I'm not saying that Sony color science is bad at all because you know, I actually uh, do like it, but I much prefer the Fuji color science uh, for that reason. It just means, it just makes it a little bit easier to get the colors out of the raw images that I want. I kind of like the fact that Fuji are a bit of an underdog. I've always been like a sucker for things that aren't quite perfect. Um, like I used to have a Honda motorcycle and it was brilliant. I would start it up, it would run every single time. And I just got bored and bought an Italian thing that could potentially blow up at any moment. In fact, I have blown one up already. That's, not, that's probably not a fair assumption of Fuji because a lot of people shoot on the Fuji system. Uh, they're not necessarily that much of an underdog anymore because their camera system is really good. Um, but yeah, I just like the fact that it's not what the obvious choice. It's not Canon, it's not Nikon, and of course now it's not Sony. So that was another reason, the hot shoe. Um, there's nothing special about this hot shoe um, necessarily, um, but it is better than the Sony system. So that's a big pro for me. The Sony hot shoe is really weird. It's got some electrical contacts at the front. Again, because I'm shooting on the Sony, I can't show you, but it's got some weird little electrical contacts here, which make it really uncomfortable and awkward to put a hot shoe mounted flash on there, an on-camera flash or even a trigger. Um, you, it kind of doesn't go all the way in. Obviously they're native 
um, flashes will work brilliantly, but I don't own any of those. So that's a bit of a pro for me that the, the Fuji's got the, um, just a, a normal heart shoe. Uh, what else? Big fan of Fuji's kind of customer support and customer relations. Um, people wax lyrical about it all the time, but they genuinely do listen to their customers. They listen to feedback. Um, they're constantly updating their camera systems based pretty well on what the clients are asking for, what the customers are asking for. Um, and not only that, is um, the ridiculous amounts of firmware updates that are constantly updating their cameras. There was a bit of a joke, and I mentioned it in a previous video, um, that they brought out the X-H1, um, which was a brilliant camera. It did 120 frames a second. Um, obviously, it had image stabilization, but it had a lot of new features. And then about two days later, I'm sure, um, they just released pretty much all of those features, obviously apart from the um, in-body image stabilization, because that's a hardware thing. But they pretty much released all of these software features uh, in all of their previous cameras, um, specifically like the X X-T2. Um, so uh, yeah, it, they just like, they're constantly updating their, their gear almost to their detriment because they're kind of, they're making their newer kit less desirable because they're bringing out all of those features in their older cameras. So, but that's a good thing for me. I like that. I like the fact that I didn't have to upgrade my camera straight away just to get 120 frames a second in video. So that's a big thing. Okay, last pro. I'm sure there's more, but I'm gonna leave it at 10, um, is snappy focus. And this is a hard one to describe, but on the Sony cameras, especially uh, if I'm using back button through in continuous mode, I kind of don't know if I'm in focus. I don't really get a sense of um, kind of what, the focus is hit. You say if I've got a couple off in, the, like sort of in the distance, uh, and I go to kind of back button focus, but there's no like there's no feel to it. It all just kind of happens internally, and I don't get a sense that it's locked on. With the Fuji system, somehow I don't know how, but it, um, I just I feel a little bit more confident that I can nail focus, especially using back button focus, just because you almost get like a little nudge. It I, I, it's hard to describe, but I probably can't do it in here. You just, you feel, you can feel the lens moving and then stopping as soon as it knows that it's got focus. So yeah, that one's a hard one to describe unless you've shot on Fuji, you kind of, you, you know, they've got that kind of snappy um, focus. It's quick and also uh, it just kind of um, encourages trust, I would say is the best word to describe it. I don't trust um, like single shot autofocus as much on the Sony system compared to the Fuji system. However, their continuous autofocus is incredible compared to the Fuji system. So it swings and roundabouts. That's enough, that's enough on the Fuji system, okay? Let's move on to talk about Sony because that poor thing's been, been left out. I've got like eight, I'm sure there are more pros to the Sony system, um, but these are the eight that really stood out to me. So the first pro, uh, for the a7 III is that it's incredible at video and it's got that in-body in image stabilization, IBIS. I just feel like they thought about video more on the a7 III compared to the X-T2, which is fair because they brought out a new um, camera specifically to, for video, uh, but it wasn't as good in my opinion. The next one is probably the biggest reason why I've constantly battled with the thought of going back to full frame. I used to shoot on the Canon system. Uh, last Canon I had was the 5D Mark III. One of the big, big, sorry, one of the big pros for the Sony system is the fact that it's full frame. I do miss full frame, not for all situations, but I just love that creamy bokeh, uh, that lovely shallow depth of field, that look that you get from full frame. But most importantly is I do believe the Sony files in terms of quality are better. Um, not just talking about, not talking about color because I do prefer the color on the Fuji system, um, but the actual files, the crispness, the sharpness, the detail. Most of the time it's not that noticeable, especially in things like portraits, group photos, stuff where you need a lot of detail. Um, that's where the Sony comes up trumps. Battery life. The battery life on the Fuji system is fucking garbage compared to the Sony. And Sony's used to be terrible until the A7 III and the, uh, the A9, until those two came out and they had those bigger Z batteries. The battery life is such an improvement and it just, I don't need to take seven batteries on a wedding day um, on the Sony system. So that's a big plus for me, big, big plus. Um, obviously IAF 
Um, you do get IAF on the X-T2, I believe. I've almost never used it, I don't think. I might have used it on the X-H1 briefly, um, but I didn't trust it. The, it's the, uh, the IAF on the Sony system is very trustable. Trustable is definitely not a word, but it's, uh, it inspires confidence for sure. IAF is brilliant. I use it in the studio all the time on the Sony system. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, the A7 III, in my opinion, is a lot more customizable. There's a lot more kind of custom function buttons and then they're, they're more useful, especially um, because I use this camera as like a hybrid camera between stills and video. So the custom buttons are different for if I'm in stills mode, to when I'm in video mode. And that's really interesting uh, because I might use a custom button that um, brings up my frame rate, which is completely pointless in uh, when I'm shooting stills, but in video it's like really handy. So it's nice to have those options for sure. That's really, really helpful. The a7 III, in my opinion, is incredibly good value. I'm sure other people will, um, will agree. Um, when the X-H1 came out, I can't remember the exact price, um, but you pretty much had to buy the battery grip for it to be worthwhile using for video. And it brought it dangerously close to the A7 III's um, asking price of, I think it was about 2,000 pounds. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it was $2,000 as well when it first came out. Uh, it's an incredibly good value, and that was one of the main reasons why I bought it, just because the X-H1 just didn't cut the mustard compared to the A7 III. Um, and it just made sense to to buy the Sony over the X-H1 just because it was such good value. And you were getting so much more for your money. Uh, what else? Dynamic range is incredible on the Sony system. Dy dynamic range is good on the Fuji system, but nowhere near as good as the Sony. Um, and that, me that opens up more doors for some interesting lighting conditions, a lot of backlighting. You can really save a lot of detail in the highlights and the shadows because of that dynamic range, and that's fantastic. Lastly, low light. Uh, the low light capability on the a7 III is incredible. Uh, you can just shoot ridiculously high ISOs uh, compared to the Fuji system. I will never go over 6,400 on the Fuji and I would much rather not go to that level anyway. Um, but I'm more than happy to go past that on the Sony. So that's a big plus for me, uh, especially because I would rather not use flash if I can get away with it. Um, until the very last minute. So bumping up the ISO is brilliant. So in conclusion, um, in my opinion, the Fuji system has better ergonomics, it's smaller, it's more affordable, um, and it genuinely suits my style of photography and my approach, especially to wedding photography, a lot better than the Sony system currently. The Sony system has better files, better dynamic range, better quality, better low light, and better autofocus. So <laughs> it's got a lot going for it, for sure. Um, but the, the, my main concerns with the Sony system is weight and expense. Uh, the actual approach to photography that I use just lends itself to the Fuji system and that's why I'm not switching to Sony from Fuji for weddings. Here's my ultimate scenario. If Fuji stayed at the same price range but was full frame and with better autofocus and a better battery life, in my opinion, that would be the perfect camera, but it's a lot to ask for from Fuji, for sure. Coffee break. I really hope this has been recording the whole time. I'm hoping the autofocus has been okay because the camera's that far away from me that I genuinely can't even see it. Have I been sitting weird the whole way through this as well? Has it been, it's not very flattering, is it? So that's the reason why I'm not switching fully to the Sony system. I hope that was helpful for uh, people who are thinking about switching to the Sony system from Fuji or any other camera brand, but, if you like me and you love kit, you can just buy one anyway and just use it every now and again. If you like the video, please give it a like, subscribe if you can, hit that bell for notifications on my next video. If you've got any comments, I would love you to leave them down below. Let me know if you agree, disagree with any of the points. Let me know if I screwed up any of the stuff that I've said and given you any false facts. But they were just my opinions and uh, yeah, hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace. Damn, that was long.